All right. Well, this one should be the end of an era in a couple of different meanings of the words. Welcome back to Journey Beyond the Abyss, everyone. Yes, if you can't tell by some minor changes in my position in inventory, shadow play failed me yet again. So, with some trepidation, I have switched back to OBS. We will see if it serves any better. Yes, it, it failed within the first 30 seconds. It didn't work again after a reset of the computer, so... Yes. Uh, all you missed was me announcing that all we'd be doing today is we would be building these machine frames and ending the chapter at last. So, that shouldn't be too terribly hard. All I did was I got my inventory together to start on the wonderful, enticing, absolutely beautiful cog grind. Yes, everyone's favorite. It is time at last. Yeah, I, I, I shouldn't be complaining so much. I know. It's just something that you gotta do to get the pack done. And we will. We most certainly will. I looked through the Pyrotech manual, and it turns out that this behavior of dropping either pebbles or chunks or, you know, outright full blocks, that is based entirely on mining level. The Silk Touch behavior has nothing to do with it. Although, I think Silk Touch should override Pyrotech, but yeah, that's just my opinion on things. And we all know what opinions mean in today's world. That should be enough. Do I need three batches? Yeah, I would need three batches. Still, I can just... Yeah, I can just get that from my excess. Don't want to hold on to too terribly much. Essentially just use that chest as a little buffer to help out for cases like this. Honestly, I probably shouldn't be holding onto shards at all anymore. But yes, I suppose that since I am switched back to OBS, I should... Oh yeah, that's right, I need to find some bones. I might be boned. Well, uh, but I suppose that since I have switched back to OBS, I could give proper streaming a try. Yes, for all that this playlist is called Let's Stream JBTA. Um, after the first two episodes with the muddy audio quality issues, yeah, we switched to just recording. It's been streaming in the sense that for the most part, I've just posted it live. Like, with the one exception so far being that time I had to... Um, okay, the, the second episode, I, rec I recorded it and streamed it at the same time, because I was trying to track down that audio issue, and when I record Breath Edge, I have Shadow Play uh, record my audio stream from my mic and the audio stream from the game separately, so that... What is going on here, other than lag? Uh, so that... I can then go into Audacity and clean up my audio, you know, run my noise filter, run run a normalizer, run a noise gate, and basically make it just a little bit nicer sounding. Because my mic is decent, but it's not, it's like a, it's a $30 mic, not a $100 mic, you know? It needs just a little more help. For all that I try and use it well, and for all that I've uh, put a little bit of time and investment into getting it set up as optimally as possible, there's only so much you can polish that turd. Um, and, and I forgot to set it back to both audio streams, uh, or, or to combine all audio sources before I recorded that episode of JBTA. So then I had to go back, recombine the audio streams and render that video. The other one was obviously the time lapse. That that obviously did not happen live. 
<sighs> well, okay, first of all, are there any other source of bone blocks? Well, if we get a source of bone meal, which I can technically buy. Huh. So if I get a crusher, then technically one and a half bones would turn into bone blocks, but that's next age. Yes. Yeah, and it looks like essentially bone shards and bone blocks can be transformed into one another. But no, other than other than buying it at this shop for five point coins each, our only other source is going to be tracking down the little bits of ore that also drop bone. Which is what I'm going to have to do in the meantime. Uh, but yes, it, it, this has been a, mostly a faithful experience of what would happen if I were streaming. I have been doing it live as best I can. Yeah, sweet. Hematite. What's this? Ah, good. This drops bones. Mostly. And, uh, yeah. I suppose that using OBS, I'll, 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 I'll run this one as a test case, yes. Um, I, uh, I've started it up streaming in private mode. I'll take a look at it, and if the audio's not too muddy, maybe I'll even start trying to do these things in full public. Like, if the audio is fine. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. And uh, I suppose it would be weird if... Like, I'd still probably put them in the buffer zone so that I have daily releases on the channel. So it'd be weird if a thing that got streamed live didn't come out for like a week, a week and a half, or longer. Yeah. Still, I just out of curiosity, I will see if the audio in this one turns out okay if there's no muddy spots. Just to know if I have streaming available as an option. Yeah, yes, let's wear our fancy pants. Oh. Can't swap just by right clicking? Okay. That's fine. Let's see nearly weightless chunks. Really don't know why I have that in my muscle memory. Oh, a piece of lapis lazuli. Sweet. We can put that on the hammer, because yes, I will want the hammer to be lucky. Yes, I find silk touch behavior is best for a pickaxe, but you also want something with luck. Hopefully I'm not going to start freezing to death. If I start to take damage, I'm just going to run back to the homestead and the sweet embrace of my life-giving, mysteriously entropy-defying tinder. Okay, we aren't terribly boned. We've got a good source of calcium within these mysterious composite blocks. Not that one, that one. Yeah, it's looking like we're starting to take damage, so let's get going. Let's get toasty. Let's also eat something to keep our health up while we're in transit. We've got enough bones to get us by for a little while in any case. Yes, I believe this is in fact exactly two sets of eight cogs that I'm holding in my hand here. So, let's start with a nice good old culling. These raw basalt, raw siltstone, marble, bleh. And what 
pockets and the old fancy pants. Eh, honestly, nothing that really needs getting rid of. Okay. There we go. So, tin and copper. Always nice having a little bit of a supply of the silver. Hmm. Silver can sometimes make some decent weapons. Avoid mousing over the redstone because we would just barf it onto the ground. Yeah, and let's take that. And let's make the temporally relevant hammer nice and lucky. Let's just give it one piece. Because luck, unless the rules have changed, luck has an interesting behavior where the more you mine, the luckier the hammer will get over time. So technically all you need is one lapis. And it will grow organically. Hopefully. It is very, very slow. We will probably eventually uncover a good source of lapis and just luck the thing up to high heaven ourselves out of sheer impatience sooner or later. In any case... Yep. Uh, the worst part is these things don't stack together, so I have to do this eight times. If it was just a matter of getting all the resources together, it wouldn't be any worse than the refractory clay, clay grind. But because I need to click and drag and click and drag and... I dislike it. It vexes me. Okay. And these are all going straight to obsidian, right? Right. Okay. So next would be gold. I need to get more gold. Huzzah! We're out of all the things. It's nighttime, too. Well, let's just... Let's just clean things up a little bit around the home. Tidy home, tidy mind. And you know, it probably will be time to turn this platform exposed to the elements into a home pretty soon. I believe next age I should be getting pollution filters right away. And that is pretty much the excuse to finally build a structure to contain direct the pollution into said filters. Which means essentially building walls around the compound and then building right now a stupid dorky looking pyramidal roof. Because that's the only means I have of controlling pollution right now. Is exploiting the way that it moves. I won't have access to vents. Well, technically I'll be able to make vents. But I won't be able to make the pumps that make vents useful for a really long time. Anyway, there should be some gold sitting somewhere in this ship. I'm not terribly worried about the possibility of having to go find a new, a new mine. Yep, there we go. And even if this weren't available, there should be another source on the ship as well, I think. Ah, I forgot to take the fancy pants off. I don't know why I call those fancy. Wait, I've already had that conversation, haven't I? Yes, and I determined it was because they have a modifier. But then again, they just have a belt while my other set has diamond on it. 
and eventually we'll have protective plates, whereas this will only ever just have a belt. So really, the other, the other pants are the fancier ones, both in reality and in potentia. But just the fact that I only put these pants on for relatively special occasions while the others are more for all-the-time wear, I guess that makes these fancy in my mind. Oh. Right. Yes, restore our tools before you take the pants off. Yes, you heard me. Before you take your pants off, make sure your tool's in good working order. It's, it's just the healthy thing to do, you know? Nothing embarrassing about it, nothing to be ashamed of. And there we go. Golden cogs. Useless golden cogs. Only useful as a crafting ingredient. But by George, they're so fancy looking. I could put those up as like a, a sun wheel decoration or something. Yeah. I suppose with drying racks, I even have things that I can hang them on as display racks. <laughs> but yes, obviously this is entirely my mind wandering because the task before me is a distasteful one. Just trying desperately to distract myself from the unpleasantness of this experience having to craft things one at a time instead of instead of just clicking the button twice. Oh the agony, oh the horror. And yes, now pretty purple ones. Yep. And they are straight up inferior to the diamond ones. But they are what the machine frames demand. I suppose that if it's like normal obsidian, we want them to be explosion proof? Question mark. So let's see here. I'm going to need two machine frames, a full three, six, nine, twelve iron blocks. Ooh boy. And was that. Two steel, two steel, and the mechanical hopper that we made quite a while. Oh, we had some of those in storage. Eh. Well, oh well. Let's just drag those over to our work table and machine frames. Yeah, that, that wasn't too bad in the grand scheme of things. That could have been worse. We're kind of reaching the point where the game is like, okay, we, we've, we've stopped coddling you. Now you just need to actually get some work done. <laughs> Those telescoping recipes are starting to really telescope. And we're going to be hungering for means of automating and simplifying. I am very, very happy I have an auto-pouring smelter already. I would not want to be casting all these metals by hand. So, ready to end the age? Well, not quite yet. We're still going to need four more cogs and... Well, I, I guess technically we're going to need three more cogs and three more sawmill blades. And that means I'm going to need more diorite. Yeah. Okay. Well... That is a simple enough ask, I suppose. Let's just go and get some more diorite first. Just lay out some filters in my pocket. And then grab something that can fill in the rest. That'll do. 
and let's go grab some more piles of junk. Really wish I had like a beer hat that would let me just drink automatically. Well, I, I guess it wouldn't be a beer hat because then I wouldn't be able to wear my O2 mask. Well, even still, if it was just limited to being on land, it would still be convenient. That situation that happened just now would be a very rare instance of inconvenience if I had a beer hat. Well, then again, then I have the situation I have right now where I'm switching between my, between my O2 set and my tanky set. And having to make the decision, except it would be between a, a three-way choice between O2, tank, or not have to remember to drink all the time. And knowing me, I'd probably be, be I'd probably be biased towards the path of maximum efficiency. Meaning, I'd be wearing the beer hat all the time. And forget constantly to take it off. Just go swimming and immediately drown. Yes, these these nice little underwater grottos full of gravel. Very convenient. Especially since if I wanted to retrieve just a mass amount of gravel, what I could do is... Now well, let's... Let's first of all clear a stack. Yes, I should be able to maybe... Yeah! And that would get me... Well, that in this case would get me andesite gravel. Is that in any way special? Recipe-wise? That's unfamiliar, so I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, I can't even... Ah, oh, there it is. Huh. Can be used for molten night slime. Or concrete. Well, is that just gravel... Is that just gravel in general? Yeah, it looks like it. So no, this is not special in any way. It's just unknown to us for unknown reasons. Get away from me. Yes, this is entirely me messing with the natural order of the filters I so carefully set up and it biting me in the ass immediately. Just to show off a janky Minecraft trick. But yes, if I if I wanted to if I had thought of this when I was mining up gravel for the sake of grout, I would have had a much better time of it. And that is an ancient vanilla Minecraft trick to boot, which probably explains why I don't know it. I've been playing modded Minecraft a lot longer than I've played vanilla Minecraft. If that makes... I, I mean, obviously, uh, obviously, everyone started playing vanilla Minecraft first, but I mean, like, I, I played it through, I beat the Ender Dragon, and I was like, well, that was neat, but also kind of shallow, and I'd like something that, like, gave me a bit more goals. Is there, is there, oh, look, a quest pack, and then played that for years, whereas I played vanilla for, like, a month. But yes, we have a wonderful excess of resources now, I imagine. Or at least I can always hope. And from there, we can just gather everything up. Sort it all away. So, I need to make three sawmill blades. Beauteous. Yeah, I 
really need to reinforce all of my stashes. And I'm going to need to make some more of those compressed sticks. Good thing we have a nice supply of them available now. Yes, this is a wonderful automation. I don't think I can even really call it decadent anymore. It has saved our butt so many times. I suppose decadent would be making some sort of automation for this, which honestly, I'm so bad at this thing that I might do that anyway. Yeah, that might actually be a case where where the um, mechanical hopper would avail us because then it would move things at a much faster rate than the wooden hoppers do, and that would go up with how this thing operates. Yeah, maybe I'll do that later when I have when I have cause to create something like the next stack of masonry bricks. Okay, I should take that off, put that on, so I remember what I'm doing. Okay, right, right, right. Okay, so. We need to make 12 of these. And we need to make some stacks of that. Because we got some more sticks that we need to make. Yes, good. And yes, three of those. I don't think the wooden hopper is particularly slow. It's yeah, I think that's the same speed as a vanilla hopper. So really, other than the fact that these things hold, only hold one stack, which I think I might like better than a vanilla hopper. Yeah, I think there's really just no downside to these things over a vanilla hopper. There. And let's get those cogs done first. So, three of those, and twelve of those. Boop, boop, and boop. And craft, craft, and craft. Now everything's up on the same tier, we can kind of move that along a bit better. So, I think I do still need to make a good uh, stack's worth of iron ingot, of iron shards, I should say. No, I could probably have done just one set. But a little bit of excess is fine. And we are also going to need 12 of these. Oh, right. Flint was next. Pardon me. I think at the very least I should only need 16 of these. Yes, it was flint and bone. I'm completely off base to where I should be. But... Such is life. Yes, I was exactly right. That is... That is a goodly amount. Can you imagine if we were doing this on the granite anvil still? Oof. I think I hurt my soul a little bit imagining that just now. I mean, at the very least, now I'd be able to put a hopper on the side of the anvil so I could just sit there and mindlessly right-click, but that would still hurt. Oh, boy. Okay, and a bit of an excessive number of shards. Okay. Let's see if four 
Uh, that would be 36, right? Yeah, we need a bit more than that. Let's see if we've got enough in the excess. I think we would need 48 in total. Yeah, I know how to multiply things in my head. I know my times tables. Okay. Yeah, we've got enough spare in there to cover it. Thankfully, this whole crafting process isn't something we have to repeat too terribly often. Oh, okay. It's a good thing that I checked before I upgraded because I would be mad. <laughs> I would be real mad. Okay, and these are just straight up, yep. So, 12 more obsidian. And let's make it 16 just so that we can do it the lazy way. I think we can shatter these on the anvil now, but why bother? Oh. Right, I was thinking in term... No, I don't know what I was thinking there. My brain just had a senior moment, I suppose. Okay. There we go. Now, I need a basic workshop. Okay. You know how I was talking about how I might just automate that, uh, that thing when we needed to make some more bricks? Yeah, that looks like that time is upon us. So, how do we make a mechanical hopper again? Two tarred planks. Let's get those going while we go and visit the merchants. And that means we're going to have to do the cog dance two more times. Because, yeah, those diamond cogs are the perfect level. Oh, boy. Fancy pants, save us from this. Save us from our own stupidity, fancy pants. Because yes, now that I say it would be decadent, it's something that I must do. I have a reputation to uphold, dang it. They want red and yellow carpets? Okay. For carpenters' houses? Now that's decadent right there. Okay. Da, 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 da. Fine. Just get a ton. Now that we can, you know, carry a whole lot all at once, actually, it might pay to stock up a little bit. And yeah, let's... Wait, how many carpets did they need? They need five of each, so two crafts. But let's get them a little bit more than that. Let's get them however many we can find just conveniently lying around. With a quick look-see around. just run through the village, see whatever flowers are available. Hmm, not seeing many yellow flowers. I guess I picked that fairly clean inside here. Maybe they'll be outside. Yes, yeah, so that's also a thing to do is to check near the year near their processing areas because the bone meal effect from the pollution clouds will cause their fields to uh, 
to restock a little bit automatically. So occasionally mowing the grass will both keep their, their pollution fields from growing too big, and it will provide us with flowers that we can use for dye to make them things to sell. And I, you know, that's why it looks like my pollution field is drifting north, isn't it? Because when it's drifting south, it's hitting the grass and turning into grass. So only the stuff that is wandering towards the sea persists, and we get this drift effect over time. That's a nice little mystery I just solved through random rambling and pure supposition with no evidence that I'm actually right. Which is the way all good science is done, as we all know. It's the finest traditions of the ancient Greek philosophers. No, really. Like, I forget if it was Aristotle or one of them, but uh, Guy was convinced that all numbers must be rational and that it would disrupt the purity of mathematics if it were otherwise so. And so he religiously persecuted the concept of the uh, irrational root of, uh, of like, was it two? Yeah, root two or something like that. He hated it with all the fury of a true religious zealot. And he would do things like... Like, I think he went out on a boating trip for a week of meditations to cleanse himself from the rage and try and ponder a way around the intractable problem. And, like, yeah, Greek, Greek philosophers were pretty crazy people. Completely full tank of blood. That is so wonderful. Oh, uh, yeah, and I should... I should set up something to begin pouring that out. I really should. Hmm. I need a lot more red than yellow flowers. Do I even... Well, I, I have enough of both. I've gone past the point of convenience and into the point where I'm just wandering around randomly. And rambling. Which, I know, that, that describes my normal gameplay. But, yes. And also, let's not buy wool from the old man. We can be self-sufficient. Because it turns out that it's possible to turn hemp into wool. All we need to do is trim down our fields. Make sure that we've got all the wonderful product. Oh, that's right, I set up a pumpkin field, and yeah, it's probably a bit inefficient. Oh well. It's fine. But yes, all we need to do now is take one of our fancy tool rods to convert it into thread most efficiently. And then we can go over to our compacting bin. Oh, no, wait. And then we can turn it into string. There is a recipe to turn that into string. Is it only primitive crafting? Yeah, it's only primitive crafting. Hmm. Unless it's... No. Well... A little bit of clicking is fine. That's no big deal. And then we can take it into our compacting bin and we can just magically smack it into a bunch of little wool balls. That's probably not enough. So yes, it is much less aggravating to go and buy it from the old man. Especially if that's really not enough. Which it really isn't. 
Okay. Never mind. Self-sufficiency is difficult. Let's go and be the capitalist we know we truly are. It's good to know we have the option, but let's not exercise said option. I suppose that'll be my philosophy from now on, is if I spot red or yellow flowers in my path, I'll just take them. Convert them into carpets. Because they're going to have a lot of those carpenters' houses they want to upgrade. So we might as well give them a good stock. Just so that they keep their production nice and constant. Make the village fully beautified. Come on, old man. There. Yes, that is significantly easier. We could also, I suppose, abduct some of the sheep in that barn over there and make a pen for them. We could even just get colored clay right out of the tap that way, but that is a bit of a slower process, unless I have a truly massive field of them. And I have a lot of big projects going on, just as it is, why would I put another one on my plate? Especially for just village upgrades. I should think of if I want to buy more tripes or if I want to figure out a different food. I mean, tripe is delicious. Good old fashioned entrails. Nature's candy bar. Yeah, exact amounts of both. What do you know? And both of them uneven amounts, too. Let's just get rid of those excesses. There we go. Hopefully that should actually be enough carpet for all the carpenters' workshops. Even if not, it's enough that they should be happy for a good while. What I'd really like to see is for them to upgrade the fort again. I mean, now that I have the fancy pants, I don't need to I don't need to have that aqueduct dug, but still it'd be interesting to see just how I could uh huh. I I guess that's a is that a tapestry? No, that's a tapestry. What's that? I'm curious what that is. But uh, yes, there upgrades beginning and that's the only project they have going right now I guess other than the village walls which yeah when we get down to the next level of the abyss we will have a source of infinite iron so when we get down to the next level of the abyss I will set aside and do a big mining project and then at that point we will dump a bunch of iron into the Normans, and that should get the wall upgrades going. Yeah, let's, let's see, no, let's do that on our own wall. Like, Norman lion pattern, huh? It's not working? Is that, do I need a taller wall? Is that used for something? 
Okay, well, that's a silver down the drain. A whole silver piece. Whatever will I do without it? <sighs> okay, okay. Mechanical hopper. That's what I need. Mechanical hopper. And yes, you are well and truly done. By now, oh, I need to make two mechanical hoppers. Yeah, that's right. So, six of those, two of those. Do I have any of those? Yeah. And six of these will get me two more mechanical hoppers. What am I missing? The tarred planks, of course. So take this and yes this is blatantly unnecessary this is me being excessive and possibly in a really unuseful way because we're gonna have to make it two more of those now oh that's painful but needs must and I am a derp who often I have failed at this thing too many times for my own personal taste. So we will we will simply have to improve upon our pitiful abilities with mechanization. I suppose that while that's going I can uh No, I don't want a stash, I want a I want a shelf. Yes, that's what I want. Yeah, so one of those. No glue necessary for that. Ah, good. There we are. And the mecha. Hoppa. Give that a diamond. Hmm. I guess that just lets us see it work. And that should be all set up. So now, instead of having to derp and finagle and struggle and not succeed, I can instead insert goods there. Let's make a nice stack, four stacks, and store the rest of the cobble for more general use. Yes, stack that up there. Then when I ignite this, yes. And now, all I need to do is keep piling the stone back up there. And eventually, it'll all be processed down with much less failure and derp. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, now the only failures should be on the part of the refractory kiln itself. And now it is time for me to pay the price for my convenience. Because we have a whole new bunch of diamond cogs to build. That hurts. And it is entirely a self-inflicted pain. Let's just put those all over there. Okay, and two more of those. Back into the list of cogs. Oh. 
right is only four of each derp. Okay, so next step. And shoot, I need pebbles. Well, easy enough. I suppose that is a reason to keep the Minecraft pickaxes around. Just for the purposes of generating these pebbles, I really wish the granite anvil recipe would work. You know, maybe, maybe the ironclad recipe would work. Because I think I saw that it also reported the recipe of crush these down into pebbles. Maybe, unlike the granite anvil, that one will actually work. Maybe. That's an enticing thought. Well, we'll find out, I guess, the next time we need pebbles after the granite anvil breaks down. Let's just... yeah, you're excessive. And... I don't have enough. The good news is that we now have a nice pile of flint at least. The bad news is we are still pretty low on bone. I would like to have a bit more of an excess than that. Right. Well, it's not so bad when it's only going up to diamond tier and only two cogs. I suppose the real pain is when you're doing these things eight at a time and it just becomes so repetitious. It also helps that I mostly had the materials just on hand, so it didn't need to run from crafting table to crafting table. Okay. So. Wait a minute. No, I need to do this one more time, because that is not a diamond cog, that is an obsidian cog. I was right the first time when I... No, wait, that still wouldn't be right because it's only four of each. I was still wrong the first time. There we go. And onward, upward, and outward. Doop. Doop. And doop. finally have the whole cog dance fully danced so what else do we need we need that work table right that's what I wanted the bricks for so start with 36 of these twenty-eight of these And doop doop doop. Sorry, crafting X for disturbing your slumber. There we go. Now I should have twenty refractory bricks pretty easy. Sixteen of those. I 
Ah, yes, and I was being silly last episode. It would be more efficient to make steak in just a plain old furnace. I should have known that just off the top of my head. But, oh well. When we need to make more leather, I will upgrade that. Well, there's no reason to be lazy when the majority of the work is done. A nice little using furnace. And okay, that's the hard part of a workshop done. Now from there, it's just a lot faster. Just a nice tank. And a nice work table. Ah, crafting axe. Yes. I was right to wake you from your slumber after all. Thank you, old friend. Alright. Right, and also there. from there it should be a simple matter of that and that and that and also one of these okay da, 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 the three machine frames and one two three four five ten thirteen Simple little planks. This thing uses lava. Why does it have a wood casing? I think this thing uses lava. Yeah, this thing uses lava. Well, don't question it. Simply appreciate the fact that we have entered a new era, as the lag indicates. Gibbush. Yep. We finally get another life, so we can be slightly less paranoid. Still probably a little paranoid. Three is a lower number than I would like. But, oh boy. Huh, that was an interesting sky we saw for a second there. And yes, we understand redstone now. Yes. Who imagined that this red powder we've been running into is in fact red stone? Oh, the mysteries of the universe open up before us. You know what? Let's just keep the emeralds. I, I guess that technically we could call that more of a mineral type thing. We're going to need to expand the storage system pretty soon. Is the real story there. And hopefully I can put it off until until an easier means of because in this chap in this chapter, I believe I should, if the game will stop lagging. Yeah. No? I could have sworn it was in this chapter. Like Yeah, look, the carpenter is up there. And Oh, you know what it is? We can't see the recipes because that's a game book that we're going to need to go into the abyss to find. But yes, we saw... Ah, yes, I should go through its recipes and see what is available to me at the moment. That is too many recipe pages to go for. But yes, pistons are open to us. TNT is open to us. Although that's quite expensive. Yeah. Uh, dispensers... All your basic redstone devices, actual hopper hoppers, are a bit more difficult to make these days. Yes. Iron doors, I guess, if we didn't just want to steal them from a ship. I think that Scribe's Workshop is something we're going to need sooner or later. Yeah, all these more advanced workshops. Some of these are... Oh, look at that. 
Oh, that is not going to be fun. Ah, uh, yes. But here we have some things that, yes, that forestry thing, that Carpentry 101 book, that's going to be the unlocker of all those. Huh. I'm not sure what that is. I know that's a thermionic fabricator. That is part of forestry's multi-block farming, which, if we wanted to put an ungodly amount of resources into building enough of these, we need a ton of these, then yeah, we could technically make auto farms this age. I don't think I'd want to do it that way. Yeah. No, that's... Is that a post box? I'm not really super familiar with the deeper end of forestry. Yeah. Yeah, I think I really need to go and find those books before I know what will be available to me, to me this age. I think that's an apiarist pipe for doing bees. That's a peat-fired engine. Yeah, those are the forestry engines. But yes, this is the immersive engineering chapter. As you can see by this being a bit more of a reasonable recipe that will probably be getting too soon. I think it's a quest coming up like, oh, that designer's workshop. That required the machine frames, didn't it? Yep. Yeah. Oh boy. Are cogs, is there any easier means of cogs unlocked to us yet? No, not really. Are there any easier means of machine frames opened up to us yet? No, not really. Oh boy. But yes, I think the only the only liquid this thing is going to use is going to be lava. All its recipes should be using lava. If nothing else, the vast majority of them are going to be using lava. Let me just see if anything catches my eye in this quick scroll through. Yes, those were pollution filters. What were those? Fluid unloaders. Huh. I'm not familiar with immersive railroading. Um, this is probably all the hundreds of pages, is all these railroading individual things. Yeah, immersive railroading gives you a lot of different types of engines and types of all that. <laughs> Motorboat? Okay. If we wanted to waste fuel on going over the water slightly faster. Mmm, sheet metal. Yep, all the immersive engineering stuff. Immersive engineering is a huge mod, and it looks like this thing does a lot of it. What was that? The Faraday chest plate? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's for... Uh, I, I think that's for... Uh, immersive engineering's power lines can shock you, and that might prevent that. Kiln brick. Yeah. Anything good? Was that a structural cable connector? Huh. Electrum slabs. If you really want to be decadent in your decorating. Hempcrete is always a good old standby. I've never used it. Hmm. Yeah, just seeing what catches my eye in the big list of things. Really, if I wanted to bore you to tears, I'd show you what I do in the creative mode where I go through this a lot slower and actually see what everything is. Fluid pumps, so close. I mean, they would need power, but we're also really close to power. Yeah, and between that and the fluid pipes, which we're also really close to, we'd be able to fill up all our water workshops and all of our soaking pots automatically real soon. Oh, that'll feel good. What the heck?
like is that yeah and I straight up just need to read this you know it doesn't use the scribes workshop it just uses this now I no I'll, I'll read reading the freaking manual to something I do in my test world off camera so that I have some vague idea of what I'm up to Really, I should be doing this in my test world off camera. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there are some applications that use crude oil. In fact, I wasn't looking at that area. So I, I probably passed up a few recipes. Okay, so we might need to make a second engineer's workshop eventually. If any of these recipes are at all useful, which they don't look terribly useful. And gasoline, too. Oh, that's because... Yeah. Buildcraft uses gasoline. Because we're going to get Buildcraft pretty soon. So, yes, I'm definitely going to want at least two of these Engineer's Workshops sooner or later. But the vast majority of its recipes use lava. So... Lava is the thing we primarily want to load at least this one up with. And I apologize for that long section of me scrolling through recipes. I think that was my brain's way of getting a break after doing the horrible cog dance for far too long. Which is probably an indication that it's time for me to go take a break. Yep. Well... Hmm. Not a terribly eventful episode, I know. This is more sort of just a big old mess of crafting and then a big old mess of derp. But we, we did achieve some minor decadence this episode. Both for us and for the Normans. So let's just celebrate our decadence with a nice firing of our decadent pit burner. Just, just for the sake of, of maximum luxury. Yes, the game doesn't appreciate it. It's too much luxury for the game. I really wish I knew what was causing those lag spikes. But yes, with that, let us call it a night. I will talk to you all later.